And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some pirate burn to kick off our rank up Sunday stream. We're going to be playing four really good decks. This is where we play a little bit closer to like the tier one decks and everything um, decks that I recommend ranking up with or decks that we've uh, either that or decks that we've had some success with over the past week or two. And so we're going to start here with this pirate burn deck. One that I think is a, a very good rank up deck and one that I, I really like the list that we played the last time also. Basically, I took like the, the generic, um, you know, pirate burn deck list that a lot of people are playing. Um, but I, I made one small change is I, I trimmed the one drops. So normally there's like 12 one drops in here. Everybody playing like three of each of these. So I took out a Precious Pet and a Crackshot Corsair because I wanted Island Navigator. And Island Navigator was really big for us the last time. And so we got two copies of this that uh, really helps our Misfortune level up. Um, and it's just a, a really great threat attacking multiple times, especially when you have the Misfortune in play with that ability. Or even having something like Crackshot Corsair and like that ability getting extra damage in. It's just something that's hard to block. And, uh, getting, you know, a 2 4 plus another body. Um, I really like this card. And so, wanted to fit two of them in here. All right. But yeah, we're, we're going to be attacking the Nexus. We're going to be very aggressive. Lots of Nexus damage in here. We got Captain Farron at the top end. It's a very good deck. So, here we go. Let's go take it on over to ranked. We'll be playing five games in ranked with all four of these decks today. So, this one, Shen Fiora, those are more of your tier one decks. The Nocturne Nightfall is a deck that I think still just really underrated. It's just, you know, basically, it's just, you know, Diana Nocturne Nightfall. Um, it has been popular at different times. It's not very popular right now. You don't see it very much. And so, we'll be playing that one. And then Ash Quinn is just a deck that we went 5 0 with um, earlier in the week, I think, or may maybe last week, you know, a few days ago. And so, we're just going to retry that one and see if we uh, find success with it again. So we're going to start by playing against Zoe Leona. So this should be <clears throat> this should be a tough matchup. Like Leona decks are very defensive. They usually have this region combination usually has a ton of nexus healing. So this may be one of our uh, worst matchups. So we'll see how we do. We're going to definitely get rid of the decimate and um, the spray fin is the other one I'm considering. I'm keeping the one drop two drop. Um, I guess I'll keep spray thin because they they do have a lot of blockers on on the ground and everything uh kind of wish i would have mulligan spray thin after now drawing four drop five drop because we don't we don't want to have a hand filled with four and four and five drops okay so turn one zoe always pretty good Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Togrek and Agent Iowa. Okay, Grand Plaza in here. No prey, no pay. I don't know why Zoe didn't attack right there. I honestly don't. Let's get to it. I think it's actually best for me to attack with Misfortune right now as well. Considering they're just going to be able to play Challengers, they'll just kill my Misfortune anyway. So it's not like my Misfortune is going to survive and level up. So I think as far as dealing the most Nexus damage and, and everything, I think it may be best just to attack with Misfortune here also. <clears throat> okay, I was going to play Sprayfin post-combat to be able to have a blocker for Zoe. Love ya. But they're just saving the Nexus damage because they know that they, they'll win a late game. The power of the immortal sun. Gotta go with the flow. And they really do not like attacking. Oh, I had the attack token. Right, that was right after I attacked. Sorry, I was talking with chat. And I, I don't know. I guess I forgot what was going on. I guess. Okay, so one mana four four challenger, it's like better than a four drop. So, 
If I play Fervor this turn, I would have three extra mana. Really good quality hand for them. Turn one Zoe, turn two Solari card, turn three Grand Plaza, turn four Leona. Turn five double spelling with these. I can't, I don't think I can afford them pass. I don't think they would pass, but I can't really afford them to pass, so. I'll just play this. not going to be an easy one to win. I don't don't know if we are going to. Hey Solari, got a bit of mover up for you. Victory at any cost. No mercy for heretics. It's going to be a tough one to win. But they are at eight. You know, like, we are just going to keep on trying, like, hoping they don't have anything that heals their Nexus. We know they have multiple... Okay, well, there's something that heals their Nexus. We know they have multiple... Um, celestial cards in hand. So we have the Fervor to respond to this. That's a heck of a card. A one mana six three overwhelm challenger. So we gotta really hope they don't have a fight spell. They haven't like had a fight spell yet. They just haven't shown having a fight spell yet. Okay, no fight spell. You wanted wrath. Explosives primed. So this could be five damage if we're lucky. If they have if they have nothing. If they have nothing to interact with me, this is five damage total. That's good. That doesn't get rid of my one damage from this thing. Oh, no, it's not. Let's see, three. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It's five damage. Wait, no, no fight spells? They haven't shown any fight spells yet? Okay, so yeah, so that's three. And now both these sh can attack and deal one damage to their nexus. They're at two. No, they had star shaping. I was close. So close. So close. Want another burn spell? Hmm. Well, that's just game. They just challenge one of these two.
That was close. Almost had him. So I think that there should be a better matchup for us. They're a slower deck that, you know, like, relying on those puff caps and everything. All those cards are good, but I don't want to just keep a bunch of expensive cards. Our deck's aggressive. We need to get our, uh, need to get our aggro going on. Hopefully no Omen Hawk. Oh, Thermogenic Beam. I guess the Crackshot Corsair would have been better against Thermogenic Beam. So, like, let's say they play Puffcat Peddler this turn. Like, so what do I want to play against Puffcat Peddler? Like, would I rather just open attack and do two damage to them, play Misfortune first, and then I have a then I'm throwing away the Crackshot Corsair, and we'd still do two damage. Um, because I probably don't attack with Misfortune into Puffcat Peddler, but maybe I do. Maybe I actually trade. Um, you know, Peddler plus Troll Chant. Uh, things get a little messier. I think I'm going to go with the Iron Ballista and oh, trade at that. Captain's orders. For the mushroom help. Do they have that plus troll chant? Or, oh, Brittle Steel, even worse. They grow up so fast. Yeah, so one, one spell mana to take down my 4-3. Overwhelm. Not a good trade for me. Looking for trouble? It found you. All right, so with that being a thermogenic beam, that's two thermogenic beams already gone. So I don't expect them to have another one for this gang plank right now. Well, they've had a, a great hand also. They have two opponents here with two really good hands. Arrows at the ready. Watch and learn. That is just the worst possible card to see, isn't it? Static shock, like, you know, obviously I guess I could have done the one two. Wow. Static shock. Well, that could not have gone any worse. Basically this whole game could not have gone any worse. This was a beating. Do I look like a patient man? Let him bleed out. Obstacle, meet gauntlet. I'm a peddler, not a meddler. There they go. This was a, a showing of what is the absolute best card in Preliord and PNZ regions to have on whatever turn and my opponent having that card over and over. Okay, good. So that is an Ezreal's Mystic Shot. So that'll be two Ezreal's down.
Wow. Yeah, I guess I guess not two Ezreal's down. Because <sighs> I need... Obviously, I need to kill this Ezreal before it kills me, but I can't... Yeah, I mean, I think this game's just over. Basically, if they have any other... If they have any other spell... Or me just always drawing puff caps every single turn. Every single card has a puff cap on it. I don't draw anything anymore. We we had all three fervors, which is, you know, maybe not the worst for me that I'm not drawing anything because. Well, thankfully they only healed one. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. System upgrade. Yeah. Let me Wow. Okay, I definitely like the Misfortune Island Navigator part of our deck. Or part of this hand. I'm gonna keep those two. Hopefully find a one or a two drop. I just didn't really want to keep the two mana two three. That wouldn't have any ability. Nope, we'll only draw expensive cards. Wow. I mean, that's that's all I could say after like all these games is just wow. Like this is just like we mulligan four four cards, couldn't get a single one that cost two or less. I mean, I guess I I needed to keep looking for trouble. It found you. That other uh, the the two mana two three the demolitionist. This is just an exercise of what... Yeah, sure. It's just an exercise of what could go wrong will go wrong. And obviously after... After the first two turns, whenever we get to turn three, and we have like our three drop, four drop that we want to play, this is where we're going to start drawing these little things that don't really do very much anymore. I don't think we need 12 one drops in this deck. Which is why I took them out for the Island Navigators. A card I do really like. If I attack with both, they block with the 2 1. Take 2, I attack again, they block. So I'm left with the 2 1. And they take 2. Always forward. I've got meat bigger than you. I completely disagree with Navigator being too slow for this deck. Okay, that was the worst poss possible scenario with Vile Feast. The last time that we played this deck, we were winning... Like, we won multiple games out of the five games simply because of Navigator. This angry for action. We're going to be really relying on Captain Fair in this game. So between Grass the Undying and Withering Whale, if I go this this route, you know, like we're getting opened up to Grass the Undying, which is what they would want to use on on the Jack. Um, if I go this route, it's a little worse for us for Withering Whale of taking out, um, you know, a Withering Whale taking out two cards. I'm gonna go this route. I think. 
I'd rather open up to grasp than whale. You are the many. So I was only thinking about the those two Shadow Isles cards and not not Avalanche. Gotta go with the flow. Playing fair and first does play into ruination. Thank you, Tank. Thank you for the bits. I appreciate that. Think about passing. Like I don't, I don't want to play a gangplank and make ruination, you know, really good. I don't really want to play a decimate though, so because if they do play like a vengeance or something like that, I want to be able to play a gangplank afterwards. I don't think they'd really necessarily play that on this turn though. They'd probably wait for me to attack. If they have vengeance, they'd probably wait for me to attack. I have my orders. With Captain Farron first. I guess I'll throw down the saboteur. I do think I should keep them from drawing two cards. At least try to keep them from drawing two cards. They again could could have the vengeance to stop this. It's just it's just much easier to stop it on the saboteur if I go on the saboteur. They can challenge and kill the powder keg, but I will be able to attack with both of these before a ruination. So I'm thinking I, I kill the spider, they cast Ruination, I play the 8-8. That's what I'm thinking. But again, then again, this is a Gangplank's part, like, right? Like, that's probably going to be a lot more valuable is just keeping it as a Gangplank. So my plan is, <clears throat> I've played two vengeances already, my plan is, uh, like, they they spend more mana next turn, and I play Farron with them unexpecting Farron. That's been very good for us, they haven't had a Nivea yet. Yeah, like, that's, that's been the really good thing for us, that they don't have a Nivea. It's unlikely they have a third vengeance. <clears throat> so if I block, then that's opening up the Captain Farron to dying to like grasp the undying plus vile feast wither and rail, that kind of stuff. Alright, so this one's not gonna be an anti-aggro deck. 
played a couple of those. Still want to face like some some twist of fate fizz, but. I'm gonna go here. Okay, never mind. Well, obviously, I could have dealt an extra point damage with the Saboteur. I was thinking they were gonna have. So, so this is a Zed Hacker Home deck, an Ephemeral deck. I was kind of thinking like the um, Island Navigator. That's not the right card. Island something else. One mana, two one. No one's the wiser. Yeah, even facing Twisted Fate Fizz all over the place. Yeah. I had been too, just not not these games. I think that's a, a good matchup for us because I think we're faster than them. Never see it coming. I am the blade in the darkness. Sorry, Legion Saboteur. Everything's better with company. Says you. Get yeah, says you. Hang on, no, Zed was never a three three, no. Zed's been the same, um, at least since open beta, since I've been playing. So am I going Jack the winner, or we can go wide with, with these things, with like Precious Pet, Jagged Butcher, Demolitionist. I think maybe we go wide. Let's see. I don't want them to play like a, some like ephemeral blocker, some ephemeral blocker. This is just a one drop. So they pass to me, like they they have like ephemerals they don't really want to play on defense. I want this Jagged Butcher to be a, a 3-3. Three, three. So, you know, we'll go Butcher plus Demolitionist. I'll put them down to 10. Ideally, these Fervors would just, just be going upstairs with them at 10. Going to need <clears throat> definitely gonna need some noxion for a verse here. What's that you got there? Your path ends So they should put them down to one. And then hopefully the Sleep with the Fishes finishes them out. That was weird. Do they not have... They didn't have the, the three mana card? 
to go along with the Dark Water Scourge. Smiles. I guess not. Okay. No champion. Most likely means aggressive. No, the no champion. Once again, mulligan everything that costs four plus. There we go. Much better opening hand. Okay, so they just discarded another urchin. Which is a little surprising. The urchin would be the worst card in their hands against an aggro deck like this, like that they'd want to get rid of another one drop. Get two damage in right now and have a 2 2 or wait and have a 3 3. There's a good chance I attack and then they go Mystic Shot. If they're playing Thermogenic Beam, good chance that I just attack, they go Mystic Shot. And I don't actually deal damage anyway. So I think it makes sense to play this. Considering there's a pretty good probability that if I just attack first, it's not even going to be a 3-3 anyway. They're a Go Hard deck, and they pass priority. So they passed priority to me and didn't play their go hard to start with. So why why would you do that? What is your thinking? Does that mean they have something like Withering Whale that they wanted to see if maybe I'd play some more one health things so they could get some good value out of like a Withering Whale? Like this next turn and then have go hard. Like I maybe I play like a 2-2 two -two or, or two. Have to worry about running out of cards though of course drawing three a turn no prey Put them down to 11. It's it's a risky fervor going for the, the one health thing. One health things are just too easy to kill. Pretty risky fervor. I sh should probably I should play the decimate first, probably. I just I want to be able to keep fervor available. Progress the Undying, but I also don't really want to throw down another Saboteur right here. Yeah, I got really punished. So they have 10 cards in hand. I have 10 cards in hand. So if I pass, we both burn three cards. They have 
three mana left. Valthys was like the worst card we could see because then, you know, they also get to kill the Powder Keg now. I'm at 17, they're at 19. So I yeah, I, I definitely think they have vengeance. Like if I if I just attack, they have vengeance. So attacking is not really my best option. Uh, I I think I do want to play Island Navigator this turn, and so if I do that, I have five extra mana, and so I'm thinking maybe like Parlay and a couple Demolitionists. Um, let's start with this Parlay. Now now we'll we'll put a Gangplank back in my deck, which is actually which is kind of good for me. I was just kind of debating on like which way to go with the parlay, whether go upstairs or, or at the spiderling. The spiderling jumps in front of stuff. Like they, I don't like this is not a good spot for glimpse beyond. Like that's like the card that you would normally see. Um, they they could they could bow piece their own spiderling. Remember the objectives. Yeah, Glimpse, Glimpse Beyond doesn't seem like it would be a very good card in their deck anyway. So they want me to attack. So they're, yeah, they're still at 10 cards. I'm at 8. But like, they want me to attack and then Vengeance? I guess? I like burning 3 cards from their deck. I was hoping to hit multiple Gohards, but we got one Gohard. So I don't I don't think they're gonna have a fast spell that's gonna kill my gangplank. With four mana. Yeah, they can do that. That's still just going to uh that'll put them down to three. Yeah. So they only have two mana left. Again, they shouldn't have a fast spell that can do four damage for two mana. They could do like one, you know, like so. I think they can have like a vile feast or a go hard, or unspeakable horror, something like that. That can heal one, and so like even if they would heal one in response, they go to four, and then I have my demolitionist that kills them. And there we go. Anyway, uh, there's our pirate burn. So yeah, came back after those first two. Um, after those first two losses, that, that second loss is pretty crazy, the hand that my opponent had in the, the first one. Uh, we almost got there against um, turn one Zoe, turn two Solari Shield Bearer, you don't get to attack, turn three Grand Plaza, turn four Leona, turn five, you know, one mana, four, four Challenger, plus the, the four mana, three, four Invoke and Challenge, the Mountain Scryer. Um, and you know we almost came back there. They didn't. The one thing they didn't have was a fight spell, and so they so we got to use Noxion Fervor to make sure that their big seven five life steal or, or seven six seven six life steal thing didn't get to gain life. And we almost got there, but they had star shaping, and so we didn't. Um, but the fervors were amazing. That was constantly one of our best cards, and the fact that Sprayfin always draws fervor. In this deck with fervor just being our only spell under three mana is really good um, we didn't really play against decks that are really focused on like other units and attacking with other units very much where island navigator can really shine when like in the the matchups with combat uh, we played against tons of spell heavy decks um, 
and like you know besides like that first one that's that's a uh unit based deck the demacia targon i guess but they're they just have such large things and i didn't have misfortune island i didn't have island navigator that matchup anyway but um yeah i still i still really recommend this deck i think this deck's very good and and um i think it's really good against like the twisted fate fizz decks that a lot of people are playing i think you can just go faster than them but so there we go. There's our first deck of the day for rank up Sunday. Pirate Burn still ended up with a winning record, and that's that's what we want, right? Like you want you want winning records, one three out of five. So can't complain about that. It looked it looked pretty bad after the first two, but we rebounded and won the last three. All right, uh, but that's all I got here for this one. Those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. What are you playing for ranking up? If you're playing this one, how's it going for you? You know anything else like that? Love seeing those comments. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Pirate Burn, and I'll see you for the next video.